Hims and Hearst just reported a remarkable earnings report. The stock is up 20% at the time of making this video. The stock itself has rallied quite well in the last couple of days. I mean, if we look back 10 days ago or so, we were under $9. Now we're currently at $12.30. We'll have a market cap of close to $2.5 billion. Ford PE currently at 40.5 times. But if you look at the analyst estimates, for the coming fiscal years, fiscal year 24 and 25, EPS is expected to grow 63% and then another 54% in fiscal year 2025, which, if you look at that multiple, I mean 30 times fiscal year 2025 approximately, not that expensive for a company growing that fast. Now, of course, you might have guessed they beat on all the consensus numbers for this quarter and even with regards to their guidance. Now, if you remember, we've talked about Teladoc not so long ago. And to be honest, if we compare it here, it's night and day. The difference here in execution is just really night and day. This is, this is great execution, good management of a growing company. While with Teladoc, huge potential, bad management. I know plenty of you have written down in the comments, Hims is better. And yes, I agree, Hims is managed as a better company right now. Now I start here with a couple of comments, first from the CEO, then from the CFO. Our outstanding results in 2023 underscore the power of the Hims and Her brands and superior execution across the organization. In 2024, we expect to eclipse $1 billion in revenue and deliver our first full year of net income profitability through a continued focus on building personalized and accessible treatments in each of our core specialties. With regards to the CFO, the strong momentum our business is currently experiencing is the direct result of a simple but powerful strategy to provide users with access to high-quality personalized care that is attractively priced and backed by a delightful experience from beginning to end. Our operational excellence, solid foundation, and profitable growth and highly disciplined capital allocation framework position the company to continue building upon this momentum in 2024 and beyond. Execution across these factors is driving the expected attainment of our 2025 adjusted EBITDA target one year early and gives us direct line of sight to our 2025 revenue target. We've talked about the 2025 adjusted EBITDA target. I think in the first or second video I talked about HIMSS and I said this is sandbagging at its best. Because if you looked at how the business was growing, how it was operating the execution, you knew very well that this was going to happen way before they said it, and way before Wall Street was expecting. And yes, they delivered, so congratulations to everyone holding their shares. Now, before continuing, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, we really appreciate that. Once want support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get a top 10 best stocks to buy now, or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So, let's start here with the main numbers, then I want to show you a couple of things in the shareholder report in the presentation, shall I say. Subscribers, that grew 48% year over year for this quarter and 48% as well year over year. Monthly online revenue per average subscriber, that actually declined 4% year over year for this quarter and only grew 2% year over year, so 22 to 2023. As for net orders, that increased 24% for the quarter and 42% for the year, so the overall year outgrew this current quarter. And AOV, average order value, increased 18% year-over-year for this quarter and also 18% for the year. Then, with regards to online and wholesale, the different segments of their revenue generation, online here 47% growth year-over-year, year. wholesale actually growing at 53% for this quarter. But if you look at the whole year, it only grew only. It grew 21%, but online revenue grew much faster at 68%. Then looking at margin net profitability here, gross margin for the quarter, 83% compared to 79% the same quarter last year. Net income, $1.2 million for the quarter compared to a net loss of $10.9 million same quarter last year. Free cash flow was $10.8 million compared to a outflow of $9.3 million. Now, if you look at the results for the year, you will still see that net loss for the year, $23.5 million. Of course, for this year, they expect it to be positive. When you look at free cash flow, that was $47 million for the year, compared to negative $33.8 million the year before. 
Now, if we look at SBC, that is obviously increased year over year as well for this quarter and for the whole year by actually about 50%. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Now, I do want to touch on this. I think this is the first time that they show us um, this type of graph. So they say here with regards to share, market share, share of observed total customers between primary telehealth providers. They compare themselves here, Hims and Zero Health, with BetterHelp, Curology, and some others. As you can see throughout the years, Hims and Hers have taken some shares. BetterHelp has actually lost here. With regards to share of new observed customers between primary telehealth providers here as well, taking quite a lot of share. BetterHelp, again, second best, but as you can see, 2022, 2023, according to them, they lost 2%. Then when it comes to marketing spend, payback period, stuff like that, they give us here two examples, one with the Q1 2019 cohort and one with the Q1 2023 cohort. As you can see, the payback period here is less than one year. They say here the primary focus from a profitability standpoint has always been to optimize free cash flow and build a model that can fund itself. Key to this strategy has been our ability to maintain a payback period of less than one year on all marketing investments. This approach enabled us to drive significant growth and profitability in a short period of time and deliver our first quarter of positive net income in the fourth quarter of 2023. While well, this is an exceptional milestone, we view this as merely a starting point for long-term profitability. I mean, I can certainly see this as only a starting point, especially if you look at the current growth rates. Now, their priorities for 2024. One, evolve personalized solution in longer tenure specialties and expand offerings in younger specialties like mental health and weight loss, drive increasing access to high quality care fueled by operational efficiencies, and three, leverage our technology assets to help more individuals find better outcomes. And I do want to show you the product portfolio, shall I say? So these are the, let's say, markets that they are working in. Currently, sexual health, estimated US population, 80 million. Dermatology, same thing here, 80 million as well. Mental health, 100 million. And then weight loss, 100 million. Of course, there are still some, let's say, segments in those markets that they can still offer some solutions in, might come further down the line. Then with regards to outlook, they expect Q1 2024 revenue to grow between 40 to 43% year over year with an adjusted EBITDA margin of 9% at the midpoint. As for full year 2024, they expect adjusted EBITDA margin to come between 9 to 10% and to grow revenue 34 to 38% year over year. The underlying themes here for 2024 are plus 85% long-term retention, expanding portfolio of personalized offering, strong unit economics with payback period of under one year, and for evolving model drives inherent marketing efficiencies. Of course, long-term profitability's target still stand here at the adjusted EBITDA margin of between 20 to 30% and gross margin in the mid 70s. So right now, if you look at the graph, we can see that the stock is at $12.27 after the market has closed. Of course, when the market opens, can go much higher, can also drop depending on the current sentiment in the market. But we can also see that we have reached a point where previously was quite a big resistance here. We got a nice rejection there actually back in May of 2023. Of course, right now the company is in a, let's say, much better place. So I won't I won't be surprised if the stock inches even higher. And maybe we could use this over the next couple of weeks as a sort of a support line. And yes, I do expect RSI to be actually overbought. So overall, very, very good quarter by him's strong execution. And that is reflected yet again in a great report. Stock is now acting accordingly. So again, congratulations to all the shareholders of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Are you taking profits? Are you buying back more shares now? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.